In today's video, we're learning all about the different types of table saw blades so that when you're ready to buy one, you'll know exactly what to get. Before we dive in, I do want to let you know that the video you're going to watch was shot about a year ago. And I'm re-uploading it again because of how important this information is to know before you buy or use your table saw blade. In order to know what table saw blade you should buy, you first need to understand what it is you're buying. And to do that, we're going to talk about three different blades, talk about their design, features, uses, and pricing. Each blade type is determined by the shape or the grind of the teeth. So as we look at each blade, keep that in mind. The first blade is what's known as a FTG, or a flat top grind. It's hard to see, but all the teeth have a flat top. Therefore, this blade produces a kerf that has a flat bottom. These blades are mainly designed for ripping, which is cutting with the grain. They are also designed to remove wood quickly, and most of them have a high or a fast feed rate, meaning that you can feed the material through the blade quickly. The blade I have here is made by Freud, and it has two features that really help it perform well and to keep the operator safe. The first feature is the blade shoulder, which is this part right here. Because of the blades, I'll call it aggressive design, it likes to pull itself through the wood. Therefore, the shoulder helps to slow down the feed rate, which helps to prevent kickback and to keep you safe. The second feature worth mentioning is the oversized gullet, which is this part right here. It's designed to remove the waste as the blade is cutting through the material. And because this blade has a fast feed rate, the gullet size is massive because it has to remove a lot of material quickly. Now all table saw blades do have gullets. They're not as big as these are simply because of how this blade is designed, but you'll see some other gullet sizes on the next blades that we're going to be talking about. There's not a ton of options for FTG blades. Freud makes a good one here in my opinion, and it will run you between $40 and $50 here in the US. The next blade is what's known as a ATB, or alternate top bevel. If we look close at the teeth on this blade, you can see that the bevel alternates from the right to the left. Therefore, this blade produces a kerf that has a pointed bottom. These blades are great for cross cutting, which is cutting across the grain. They're also used in general purpose blades as well as some ripping blades. They're great at cross cutting because the alternating bevels act as a knife, slicing or scoring the wood to minimize tear out. Feed rates can vary on these types of blades, but they're nowhere near as aggressive as the ripping blade we just looked at. The features are similar to the FTG, but they do have smaller shoulders and much smaller gullet size, which tells you that these types of blades do indeed have a slower feed rate. Here's an example of a 60 tooth ATB. This is a Diablo and it's going to cost you about $43 here in the United States. This is a great option because it can be used both in the table saw and over in the miter saw. However, ATB blades can also be used as a general purpose blade, meaning that they can both cross cut and rip, and they almost always come as a 40 tooth blade. And I have two examples here for you. The first blade that I have is a saw stop, which will run you about $40. The other one I have is a forest blade, which will run you about 160 US dollars. And I'm sure you're wondering, why is there such a drastic difference between those two blades? Well, the short answer is that the forest blade is simply a better designed, higher quality blade. The next question then would be, is it worth four times the cost? And in my opinion, as a new woodworker, absolutely not. There are plenty of other things that you can spend that extra money on here in the shop, and you can always add that stuff later on to your arsenal of tools. Now you may have noticed that these blades actually say combination on them and not general purpose. General purpose and combination are often used interchangeably, but in reality there are some differences and like most things it all depends on the type of material and tasks you find yourself doing. So let's move on to the next blade so you can actually visually see what those differences are. The next blade is called an ATBR. An ATBR almost always comes as a 50 tooth blade. And if we take a closer look at the blade, you can see that the teeth are actually grouped in fives. Four of them are alternate top bevels, which is why the blade is designated ATB. But what about the R? The R stands for raker, which is a flat top grind. So now you can see that this blade's design is a true combination of one flat top grind and four alternate top bevels. 
Because this blade has teeth of both previous styles, it produces a curve that's almost perfectly flat, leaving a slightly convex bottom. These blades are great at both ripping and cross-cutting, and as far as the main features, the one that stands out the most is its unique teeth arrangement. The other feature, similar to what we saw on the rip blade, is a pretty decent sized gullet behind the groupings of teeth. And as you know now, the gullets help to remove material and to increase the feed rate. Bottom line, the ATBR is a great multi-purpose blade and it's ideal for the DIY or newbie woodworker. If you decide to go with one of these blades, it's going to cost you around $55. And for a blade that does it all, that's a pretty good deal. So now that we're familiar with a few of the different blades out there, let's talk about four very important options that almost every blade has to offer. First is the option to choose more or less teeth. The general rule of thumb is this, the more teeth, the slower the cut, the cleaner the cut. And then the fewer the teeth, the faster the cut, the rougher the cut. Some blades, like my combination blade here, only comes with a 50 tooth option, so you can't change much there, but other blades do give you more flexibility. The second option is the ability to buy a thin kerf blade. A standard size blade is an eighth inch thick, but most blades nowadays give you the option for a thin kerf, which is 3 30 seconds. Thin kerf blades were designed and made for saws that were underpowered, or when cutting a lot of thick stock. They can of course be used in normal operations as well because they do remove about 25% less material than a standard blade. The last two options are specific to the teeth themselves and the first one is the hook angle. The hook angle is the pitch of each tooth. This angle can be anywhere between negative 5 degrees and 20 degrees. For example, the hook angle on the FTG blade I have here has a positive 20 degree hook which makes it quite aggressive. My thin curve combination blade has a 10 degree hook angle, which slows the cut and the feed rate down. They even make a negative five hook, which gives you a lot of control with fine cross cut work. The last option that we're gonna talk about today is the bevel angle. The bevel angle is how much each tooth bevels to the right or to the left. The bevel angles can vary from 15 degrees to 30 degrees. If you increase the angle, you increase the quality of the cut. General purpose blades almost always have a bevel angle between 10 and 15 degrees because it gives them the ability to make clean cuts and stay sharper longer at the same time. Now that you understand a lot more about saw blades, my hope is that you're gonna be able to go out now and purchase what's best for you. But if you're the type of person who likes to be told what to buy, here are my top three blades that I recommend. The first blade I would buy is a 50 tooth ATBR combination blade, which can be used on almost anything. Second, I would buy a 60 tooth ATB cross cut blade, which can be used both in the table saw and in the miter saw. And lastly, I would buy an FTG ripping blade that's great for thick hardwoods and things like 2x4s. All the blades that I just mentioned are made to fit a 5 8 arbor, which is the shaft that holds the blade to the motor. Here in the US, I believe all stationary saws that use a 10 inch blade use a 5 8 arbor. Well, I know today's video was a lot to take in, so if you have any questions or if you'd like to share what some of your favorite table saw blades are, please drop me a comment below. God willing, I'll see all your smiling faces next week. Bye for now.